go see if we can't catch some crappie during the week. Yeah. And then make everybody that at work jealous. Hey guys, things to remember when you're crappie fishing. So you're looking for a pattern. And once you establish a pattern, then then you can uh, you can you can actually you'll catch more fish once you establish a pattern. So your goal is to establish a pattern. So you have to remember how deep you were when you got your first hit. You have to remember how deep the water was when you got your first hit. And and then look to see uh, what that pattern is. And sometimes uh, the structure and the depth of the water are all in line. And then from there, then uh, you create a pattern and you try to fish that pattern throughout the day. Like for today, uh, the pattern is uh, uh, eight to six feet of water and swimming, swimming the bay. Not stabbing, but swimming the bait two to three feet deep. The speed of the swim is actually, they're sensitive to the, the speed of the, of the swim. Uh, too fast, and they strike it and miss it. Too slow, they're not interested in it. So uh, you, 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 you got to find that happy spot uh, on the swim. Uh, so uh, these, are the, these, these things, you know, help you catch your limit, you know? So you have to you have to really, really, when you first start fishing, you gotta really, really pay attention uh, and look for a pattern. Black crappie. Nice crappie. Nice fish.
<clears throat> nice fish. Nice fish. Yeah, that Devru bait, man. Nice fish.
Uh, got a limit here. Uh, here in Texas is 25, 10 inches. I got um, 24. I normally stop fishing at 20 because I, I can, I never do keep good count. And then once again, the good thing I did because I would have went over if I had to. But because uh, I thought I had 21. Yeah, but here it is. Another good day of fishing. Hey guys, uh, gonna give you another catch, clean, and cook video. Um, so this time we're gonna fry the fish. And so what is a catch, clean, and cook without a clean? And there's a lot of videos on YouTube showing you how to clean fish and so we're not going to get too deep into that. Just going to clean a couple of fish here and, and, uh, uh, and then let you guys see how I do it, uh, which is no different than in the way anyone else will lay them. Uh, the, the one thing I just had to add is, guys, don't, don't put your uh, guts in the garbage. Go ahead and dump them. Something like a buzzard or something will for sure the buzzers do you. Uh, if nothing else the buzzers do you. And so you know how this they, you know how they say it's a circle of life. So uh, just uh, you know take a minute and think about it how you know putting it in the garbage bag and it going to the dump and rotting in the bag opposed to uh, you know taking it and dumping it somewhere where the buzzers can eat it. You know, just give it a thought. But let's, let me clean uh, some fish for this catch. Clean and cook. I don't know why I have so much trouble saying catch, clean, and cook. But, uh, uh, and, uh, uh, because I don't like the clean part. I like the catching part and I like the eating part. 
So if I get someone to do the, the cleaning and the cooking, then uh, I'm good. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's like really good. So, but anyway, I'm gonna do some cleaning of fish and let you guys check it out. And like I say, there's, there's tons of videos out there on how to clean crappie any fish. I'm not saying my way is the best. All right, guys, I'm getting ready to, to fillet this fish. So let's cut. So we're gonna cut down to to the uh, to the backbone, right behind this fin, and then we're gonna twist the blade sideways now notice that I have I have my cutting board all the way to the edge of the table that way when I twist the blade that my my hand is not hitting hitting the table so that's something uh, if you if you first start doing this uh, is to remember to have your your cutting board all the way to the edge of the table And when you cut it down to this tip, you you know you got to stop at some point, and you have to say to yourself, okay, you're not gonna get all the meat. So you know, stop at a point where you can uh, you won't have any issues when you go to fillet this this meat from the skin. So that's one fillet, and let's turn it over. Now, the top of the fish is farther away from you. And so you have to remember when you when you're filleting fish like this, is that when you cut down to the backbone, you cut down to the backbone, you gotta get when you get to ready to you get ready to twist your blade. You gotta get the, uh, make sure that your blade is up against the backbone because it's it's, it's farther away from you. And, uh, and if you don't, then you'll leave a lot of meat on the backbone. I'm doing this side I usually take my time to do this side because uh, this is the side that you can you really screw it up okay so this is like a, a, a ten and a half inch crappie which is my favorite to eat I, I'm quite honest with you between the 10 and 11 inches the thicker ones, I mean, you get a lot more meat, but uh, uh, with the, the way the seasoning is on, on the fish, uh, and you get the, uh, more of a, a crunch, it's just a texture thing for me. So you get more of the crunch, the texture uh, from, from that. But, <clears throat> I don't know if you can really see, but you don't, there's not, uh, there's not a lot of meat left on there. And this is why I'm saying, you know, don't, don't, uh, don't throw this in the trash can. Don't put this in a plastic bag. Just, just dump it where the buzzers can get it. Or if you're fishing at a lake where they have a cleaning station, clean the fish there and, uh, and then they'll dispose of it the proper way. But some of them have slide chutes where they will, it just slides down into the water and just dumps back into the lake. But yeah, for sure. A catfish, if you dump this back in the lake, a catfish will, will thank you for it. And then you'll go back out and you'll be catfishing and you'll catch a big old fat catfish from your from your scraps that you threw away. Let's go ahead and notch out the, uh, the rib cage. Uh, so if you like eating around a bone, 
then you can actually leave the rib cage in and eat around the bone. Now I usually notch mine the rib cage out like so. And the reason why I do it like that is not because I'm really want to save this piece of meat right here. It's because I like to eat this piece of meat right here. Like I say, I like the crunch. So it's all about the texture for me on some of the fish, but uh, I like I like the way this piece tastes. I mean, it always tastes so freaking good to me. I don't I just really like it. I, can, I think it's just the, the way the season it is. So, you know, these thinner pieces of fish. But there you have it. You know, there's a there's a, uh, a 10 inch fish, 10 11 inch fish, uh, filleted up and you know, ready for you to uh, fry it up. Now, so this is what you have left after you notch out that rib cage. So, catfish will really love this. If you dump this back in the lake, the catfish will be like, man. That's my friend. Until you hook him, and then you get bent, and you start pulling him out, and he's like, "This guy set me up." Remember that. Somebody tried to eat him. Wow, this fish still has eggs in it. Some people uh, don't like the, you throwing away this this piece of meat. So remember, you're not throwing it away. You, you're putting it back in the lake. And uh, but anyway, you can cut this out and have a little nugget if you want. I do that on some of the, the 15, 14 inch fish that I, I catch. Uh, I'll do that. You can just take it. Now, basically, what you have is, yeah, is this right here. Let's throw that away. Let's talk about uh, meat first. 
burgers. So here's your meat. Two fillets, really nice thick fillets. Yeah, look at that. That that so me, the reason why I like those smaller ones, because this, I mean this is gonna taste good, don't get me wrong. But I just the force texture though. Those small ones are really crunchy. They make you feel like you eat more like you're eating a pan fish. If you got kids, you feed them that and like, you know, give me those chicken fish nuggets. Hey guys, so this is the, uh, the, the cleaning part of this video. So next up is uh, it's the cooking. And so we're gonna fry this fish up. We're gonna cook some hush puppies with it. We're gonna cook some french fries with it. Oh my, it's gonna be good. Hey guys, today is the cooking portion. You've seen the catch, you've seen the clean. Now today, you're actually gonna see Wiley Coyote do some cooking. Hmm? I'm getting off easy. I'm just preparing sides and a little bit of special treat for you. Okay, so here's the ingredients for today. We're gonna to be making two varieties of tartar sauce. One regular tartar sauce with a sweet relish, mayonnaise and onions, and then one spicy tartar sauce which is gonna be made with the dill relish and cayenne pepper. Of course, with mayonnaise and onions. We're gonna be using the fruit food processor today to cut the onion up fast. Once for the hot and once for the not hot. For regular which is me, I'm the not hot. Okay. All right, so this is uh, about a half a cup of mayonnaise for each of the variety that we're going to make. That'll serve quite a few people. When you're making this, make sure you use the real mayonnaise. Nothing with sugar in it already because you're gonna season it to your own taste. And we're gonna get started adding in the fixings. All right, so we got a tablespoon of onion. I'm gonna put two tablespoons of onion. You can use less if you prefer. All right, so we're gonna do sweet relish, a little bit of peppercorns, and dill weed. Dill weed is gonna make the difference in how your tartar sauce actually textures up and, and has a flavor to it. You got two tablespoons of onion. And we're gonna cover that pretty good with the dill weed. That's gonna flavor the mayonnaise a little bit better for you. I'm gonna come in with two good heaping spoons, tablespoons of your sweet relish. And then I'm going to just add a little pepper to taste. Just a couple of grinds of it, or however, if you use regular pepper, that's fine as well. But this is going to add to how your tartar sauce flavors up well. You can make this in advance. You can make it the night before, put it in the refrigerator. The longer it sits, the better it gets. All right, here's the ingredients for the spicy tartar sauce. It's gonna burn your mouth. Burn. For the spicy, you're gonna do the same. One to two tablespoons of onion. I prefer two because it's gonna give it a really good flavor. Next, I'm gonna cover it with, again, just liberally sprinkle on your dill weed. It really flavors the mayonnaise well. On this one, I don't need so much pepper, but I do like a little ground pepper in it. This time, we're going with the dill relish. Again, two tablespoons of your dill relish. And your secret ingredient, which is gonna make this very hot, some fresh, some cayenne pepper. And you're gonna just kinda of liberally sprinkle that
and it's going to be hot. All right, so you start mixing. Hey guys, we're gonna make some coleslaw. Here we go. Here are the ingredients for it. Seems pretty simple. Oh, it's gonna be simple. This is already cut up. I did a broccoli slaw. You can do the traditional cabbage coleslaw, but we like the broccoli slaw. You're gonna just be making a, a sauce to go over the slaw. And it's uh, about one and a half tablespoons of mayonnaise. And here, this is just a little bitty, like a, almost like a baby spoon. So I don't want much sugar in this. I'm gonna put about a, the equivalent of a, a half a teaspoon of sugar. Okay. And to bring a little bit of tang to it, just a couple of little shakes. So let's do it like this. Let's do it by the spoon. That's a half a teaspoon. About a teaspoon of either your lime, lemon or lemon juice, whatever you use. And you basically then just want to stir until you get a good consistency. So it's kind of thin like salad dressing. Yeah, this, this is a little thicker than salad dressing at this point, but you can make it thinner by adding more of the lemon mix to it, the lemon juice, or some people make it with pickle juice as well. They have a keto version that's actually made with pickle juice. So basically all you're doing is coating the coleslaw with that mayonnaise mixture, with a slaw mixture that you've made. You can also buy the slaw mixture in a store that's already together, but it normally has a lot of sugar in it. So if you're not trying to get it too sweet, then that's all that you need to do. Hey, guys, guess what? We're gonna have some hush puppies with this fish fry today. So uh, we got this house uh, batter here that we're gonna uh, use to fry the fish. It's got some instructions on the backside. Uh, here, let me get it all in this bowl here and, uh, and get it whipped up and, uh, and we're gonna fry it up and check it out, all right? Hey guys, so we're gonna mix up this batter. Uh, it's called beer batter. And I'm telling you, you gotta try this beer batter because it's gonna be delicious. I mean, everybody that I told about it has tried it. It's like, wow, this is really good. It's kind of like a, a line of junk, Long John Silver, but I mean, this this is really good. So uh, when you put it on your uh, on your fish, uh, it's like a dip, and uh, you may want to fry a piece in it and then decide whether or not you're going to add salt later to it. But uh, for now, it's time to sacrifice. I do say this for this fish, fish fry. I'm gonna add a little slappy mama to the fish right before I dip it, just to give it a little more flavor.
Hey guys, I'm uh, I'm for this uh, hush puppies. I'm making some small balls, and I'm trying to get them all the same size. And I'm gonna roll these into the. Uh, I'm gonna set these right down into the fryer. I'm gonna get them all ready here. I think I got enough right now. I have one more. Looks like you added something in that batter. Yeah, got some corn in there. Let's see what happens. <laughs> All right, guys, time for my second favorite seasoning. Here it is, slap your mama, Cajun fish fry. This is not spicy. I do not like spicy food. Burns me up. Okay, so here we go. Well guys, here it is. Here's my plate. Yeah, it's looking good. Boy, I know. I know you wish you were here to eat it with me, but I'll take care of it, don't worry. Hey, thanks for subscribing. Thanks for watching. And thank you guys for all your support. I really appreciate you. So uh, to the next time, <laughs> you know what I'm gonna say, get bent. <laughs>